in this video four reasons why you need to know about delay compensation in Ableton Live. Reason one, some effects will be out of time if you put them in the wrong order. For example, when using a plugin such as LFO tool or Volume Shaper to simulate sidechain compression, placing it here works as expected, pumping volume around the kick, whereas placing it here doesn't work as expected. Here, the volume doesn't pump when we tell it to. Reason two, return tracks can get out of time with everything if they are routed back into an audio track. This usually results in unwanted comb filtering. There's kind of a fix, but it can be more trouble than it's worth. Reason three, level meters and other bits of visual feedback can get out of time with the audio, leading you to incorrectly think Ableton's glitching. Reason four, delay conversation is turned on by default, but if you turn it off by accident, everything will be out of time and you'll have no idea how to fix it. I'll explain how this works, but for more tips and tricks like this or a more structured approach to learning than you typically find on YouTube, do check out Groove 3. I'm one of the course creators there and they have courses on absolutely everything audio and music production related. Links in the description below, naturally. <laughs> so what is delay compensation? Audio effects take time to process the audio and the time it takes between the sound going in and coming out is called latency. You can see the latency down here by hovering your mouse in the device's title bar. Here's an extreme example. You see the sound coming in on this meter here and out on this meter here. The latency for this de-clicking effect is just over half a second, 600 milliseconds. Watch the sound go through five of these. Usually the latency is much smaller though, 26 milliseconds or 1.3 milliseconds or even 0.1 milliseconds and sometimes zero milliseconds, no latency. But of course, lots of small latencies can add up to a big latency. So watch out for that if you like using a lot of effects on a single track. Delay compensation synchronizes tracks with different latencies. So they all play in time together. As a simple example, the top track is a spring noise I made and the bottom is that spring with a de-clicking effect. The top track has no latency and the bottom track about half a second of latency. With delay compensation, they play in time. They play together. But without delay compensation, they play out of time. The time it takes for the bottom track to process the audio isn't compensated for. Similarly, delay compensation synchronizes effect rack layers too, known as chains. And sensibly, delay compensation is turned on by default. Wonderful, but if you do encounter any timing issues not solved by delay compensation, you'll need to freeze and flatten things. You need to freeze and flatten things to audio so that there is no delay to compensate for, so that there's no real time processing to compensate for. This latency comes from Ableton needing to process the effect in real time. <laughs> An effect will get out of time if it syncs to song positions, such as say the start of every bar, and if it comes after some latency inducing effects in the processing chain. Delay compensation matters for effects like sidechain compression because the sidechain compression plugin needs to know exactly when each bar starts to pump in time with the beat. And latency in the processing chain makes it difficult for these downstream effects to sync themselves to position in a bar, to song position. In other words, latency here means that this effect can't sync its modulation to a specific position in a bar or song. As shown in the intro, when there's no latency before Shaper Box, it pumps exactly when we instruct it to, perfectly around the kicks. But when there is latency before Shaper Box, it pumps at the wrong time. We've told it to pump like this, but it's pumping like this. Note, delay compensation doesn't matter for effects that just use tempo information, like a 1 8th delay. A 1 8th delay isn't synced to the grid, it's just using tempo to set the number of milliseconds automatically to something natural. I mean, you could set all this stuff manually if you wanted to, there are whole websites dedicated to this. But anyway, as a rule, if the effect needs to line itself up automatically with the grid to do something rhythmically in time with the track, Check for preceding latency. Check for preceding latency in these preceding effects. If the effect is significantly out of time, something like this, then uh, I suppose almost somewhat paradoxically, it's, it's okay. It's okay because you'll clearly hear this is a mistake and start troubleshooting to fix it. But if the latency is small, maybe something like this, if the out of timeness is only subtle, then you can easily have a track rendered worse in a way that's easy to miss, especially for untrained ears. So it's important to know about this delay compensation. You don't see it every day and therefore it's easy to 
not learn about, but you definitely do encounter it every now and then. <laughs> Return tracks are not delay compensated when routed back into an audio track. Deactivating the send on the receiving audio track can help with some routings, but not all of them. So if you can use a spare audio track instead of a return track to do the routing, do that instead as that will be delay compensated. Let me show you. Here we have some white noise. One instance goes directly out to the master and then another goes via a return track with an EQ8 on it. You can check the routing, but I mean, to be honest, it's, it's easier to show you with this flow chart here. As the EQ isn't changing the sound, we expect this audio routing to play the original noise just louder as it's playing two instances of the same sound. With the EQ8 in normal mode, with zero milliseconds latency, this is what we hear. However, in oversampling mode, with 0.3 milliseconds latency, the master output sounds comb filtered as this instance is arriving 0.3 milliseconds late. This layering creates comb filtering more about that soon. It's arriving 0.3 milliseconds late because routing a return track like this back into an audio track isn't delay compensated. Idiosyncratically, fun word, disabling the send on the receiving audio track does make this delay compensated. Strictly speaking, it's about avoiding the possibility of an infinite loop. Infinite loops can't be delay compensated and that is why deactivating sends can work. Here, the infinite loop happens like this. Deactivating the send on the receiving track alone isn't enough. I also need to deactivate this send to avoid the possibility of this infinite loop. So as I'm sure you can imagine, it can get a bit fiddly to work out where in a big project with 200 tracks an infinite loop may occur. The quirks of Ableton signal flow are a bit awkward to remember, and so as a rule, remember this. Avoid routing return tracks into audio tracks. There's always another way to engineer the idea that's in your brain. As I said at the beginning, level meters and other bits of visual feedback are not delay compensated and so they can get a bit out of time with the audio. In this previous example, you can see the level meters here flashing before the audio is heard. So don't be worried if the level meters flash out of time with the audio. It doesn't mean something's wrong. Everything is working as intended. Beyond the obvious, what happens when things get out of time? If you're parallel processing or otherwise layering phase correlated audio, timing issues can result in comb filtering. I'll show you on some white noise to make it easier to hear this effect on frequencies. Simplistically, white noise is a random collection of frequencies, all of about the same amplitude. This randomness is more easily seen if we look at the spectrum linearly. But we used to look in logarithmically, so let's hop back to that. It's what we're used to. Here we have two copies of the same white noise happening at the same time. Sounds like white noise, obviously. But if the bottom is one millisecond late, if the bottom layer starts playing one millisecond behind the top, we see this comb filtering effect. Comb because the filtering shape looks a bit like a hair comb. Apparently, this is what they tell me. I haven't actually seen a comb in real life before with different time offsets causing different comb shapes. 0.1 milliseconds. 0.3 milliseconds. 0.5 milliseconds. One millisecond. And two milliseconds. Sure, you might like the comb filtered sound, and sometimes it's good, but better to add comb filtering as a creative effect intentionally, not as a quirk of the DAW signal flow. If you like the comb filtered sound, do it intentionally. <laughs> Time for me to go and collect some new bits for the studio. More about that next video. The rhyme. <laughs>